Hello and welcome to the Hangout. Yes, it's Wednesday night. It's time to spend some time with someone. And tonight we have Alessio Cavatori, famed games designer. Um, was famous for Warhammer 40k 5th edition, now more famous for bolt action, I would imagine. Um, he has secured the license for Terminator Genesis. Um, and he's been deliberately very vague about a whole lot of stuff until now. So tonight, we're going to try and nail him down. Um, Alessio, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Alessio, uh, Terminator Genesis. What a scoop. <laughs> what can you tell us about it? Yes, very exciting. Very, very exciting. Uh, I mean, in general, you know, since I I went uh, inter entrepreneur and started my own company, it's always been small projects, small projects, small project, build it a bit, build it a bit, build it a bit. You know, it was like if it was a poker game, I was playing a very cagey, very cautious game, playing only when I had good cards, etc. This time, <laughs> it's all in. Yeah, it looks like you went all in. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely all in. No, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah, it's definitely by a factor of I don't know how much the biggest thing we've, we've done as River Horse. So clearly scary, clearly exciting. Very very happy. Uh, so how did it happen? And um, we were talking to Paramount about a another license. <laughs> we secured that license. Not quite as big as this license. But uh, while the talks were happening for this other little license, which we'll talk about it later, next year or something, um, well, uh, some on their side went, ooh, these guys do that kind of stuff. And I was saying, well, uh, do you think they would be interested in this other license, which is becoming available and is becoming blah, 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 relaunch of the movie, rebooting and everything. And uh, so they asked us whether we would be interested in that side, in that IP. And obviously I had a moment of unhinged <laughs> joke, kind of going, let me think about it. Let me check my agenda. Uh, yeah, well, yes, we're interested. <laughs> but behind my back I was going, yes! <laughs> so yeah, that's how it came to be. So you have secured, obviously, the Terminator Genesis game. Um, yep. What what kind of a game is it going to be, Alessio? Well, the uh, <laughs> as you know, my, my, my forte, if you want, the, the, the thing where I have more experience is, is board games. Yeah. So you know, I try board games, card games. I, I like all types of games. But you know where my experience lies, as far as what you were saying, you know, what games I've written for a lot of people, is war games. So really I was waiting for a war game that I could put my name to, put my company's name to, it would become our system, our war game. And I had already a system written for Yuns, uh, but basically I never had a something to match it with in terms of setting, IP, etc. And frankly, lazily I didn't want to start to build an IP <laughs> from scratch, because that sounds like very hard work. Uh, ultimately, probably a better idea, but on the other hand, when this came about, it was perfect. It was just married. It was like, oh, I have a, a work game system, which I, I like, I designed for years, and uh, now I have that, and I will just join the two. And <coughs> to answer your question, yes, a war game. Absolutely, a war game. Um, however, I mean, as you know, I mean, we 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 spoken many times about all you know, all the games I designed recently. Uh, I have gone minimalist, you know, simple, simple. The mantra of simplicity was, you know, is I keep repeating that again and again. So a very simple war game, a war game that uh, will start small, a skirmish war game, and hopefully, well, depending on how the how the product goes and how the, the future goes, <laughs> there is no fate but what we make for ourselves. Um, <laughs> Depending on the, on the future, we'll, uh, we'll see whether we grow it into something bigger or not, or we keep it skirmish, you know, but we'll start from a skirmish war game. Awesome. Um, do you want to talk a bit about the mechanics, or do you want to have a, a look at some of the, the early prototype miniatures and things like that that you're working on? Uh, miniatures, miniatures, miniatures. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, we could look at miniatures. This is Way. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite um, 
etc. I probably should have done choo 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 choo. <laughs> but, now um, you're you're gonna have people absolutely quaking in their boots, thinking that that's the scale of the miniatures that they're gonna be using. <laughs> it may be worth pointing out that that is a three up. <laughs> what that was. That was a three up model, as in three times the size. It's been sculpted in that size because it's gonna be produced in hard plastic. So sculpted a three up and then pantographed down to 28 mil. Roughly 30 mil, you know, heroic scale, 28, and uh, produced in hard plastic. Now I can spend some time talking about the models first, and then we can go into the game. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, um, I have some pictures of the uh, of the of the miniatures uh, of the the three ops anyway. So it's um, so here we have um, and those here we have some test shots of them. Yes, they still um, work in progress, of course. They're not finished. Finished. Yeah. We're working on them. So, um, how many Terminator models? Are likely to be uh, to be in the game, you know. And when I, I say models, I mean like of the the T one thousands and uh, etc. Click through the pictures. We see the other. Okay, right. Uh, so the the game uh, we include those models, and the game itself. Well, okay. Let's talk about the game, and we can talk about the models then. Uh, basically, the um, the box. The we were starting with a box, uh, which uh, will include. Ten Terminators, endoskeletons, the ones you've seen, the ones you've shown. Uh, ten of those guys. And five crawlers. You have a picture of a crawler? There we there go. Is. The little fella. He's lost his legs, unfortunately. Had an incident. He met some plasma balls. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you basically get, if you see the two Terminators, left and right, and the one in the middle, those are the effectively what you get out of a frame, of, it's a small frame of Terminators. Yep, okay, moving, next picture, <laughs> if you have one. Um, I've, I have a picture of a test that's frame the, here. Yeah, or something. So yeah. the, frame, the frame of Terminators, which has two legs and bases, two torsos which clip onto the Onto the onto the onto the legs, and then are arms that clip onto the onto the torso. So effectively, you have two models, two complete Terminators, which are dry fit, clip, just clip in, click, 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 and they have a little bit of twist around the torso and a little bit of twist around the arms up and down. But mostly, they will stay roughly in that position. You can give them a bit of an angle, but you get quite a lot of variety out of those by just rotating the angles of of arms and, and, and torso. Uh, so in there, you get those two and this crawler. So every one crawler with two terminators. Um, now that frame. That looks screw layout. That layout looks very familiar to me. That that kind of design process. Please tell me you're engaging Renedra in this. Yes, we are very proud to announce right here and now that Renedra are doing the plastics, the hard plastics, uh, both for the terminators and uh, and the resistance. Yes, yes. Well, you know, uh, that's part of the part of the story was that uh, we had to do this. We found out at the very last minute we could do this, so we had to do everything in where we could control, we could interact, etc. We couldn't go to the far east, and I went, you know what? Let's not let's not even think about it. Let's go for the best in the world <laughs> instead. <laughs> so so, when, the, so was the entire project then a, a UK project? You, you, you've kept it all within the UK I, then? At the moment, at the moment, it seems that everything is going to be produced in the UK. Yes, everything. Every single bit of it. Uh, we may end up with some components coming from, uh, from continental Europe at the furthest, but probably looks like we, I can actually get everything completely from the UK, yes. And you know it's it's a good thing. It's a good it's good operationally because you can actually you can actually uh, you know it's easy to go and drive an hour and go to talk to to, to people that are helping you with stuff. And also uh, it's actually it feels good because of, again it's you know impact keeping it in the country you know keeping it at a high quality keep it at uh, without a, 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 I suppose a, a, a lot of mileage and impact. So now I know you're engaging um, a number of sculptors. Some you're not ready to announce just yet. But you, are you prepared to talk about some of the sculptors that you've you've yes. brought onto the project? Yes, of course. Uh, same as above. Uh, so the <laughs> Britishness. Uh, so uh, the endoskeletons you've seen and the resistance soldiers, we hard plastic ones that you will see, not in this hangout because they they're not finished yet. But they have been sculpted by veteran sculptor Bob Naismith. 
which you know everybody will <laughs> remember him from workshop to being basically involved with sculpting stuff for everybody. <laughs> Bob is one of the most successful freelancers uh, and he's done those for us and he's basically finishing now the, the resistance. Uh, so plastic sculpted by a, a famous designer and produced by the I would say arguably the best company in the world for hard plastic. So uh, absolutely. So let me just recap on this. So you're, you're coming out with plastic miniatures. They're able to dry fit, so not necessarily needing glue um, mm -hmm. to, to put them together. Um, I suppose all that's left to be asked is about the scale. You know, what what scale are we looking at in comparison to other miniature games? Twenty-eight mil is the official scale, but of course Terminators Army, you know, they're they're not small guys, so they they stand at about thirty. 230 to the eye, 33 to the top of the head. You know, it varies depending on the position. You know, one is a bit more, his legs are a bit more bent, kind of walking. The other one is a bit straighter. So, but, but roughly, they're about 30, 30 some. So, yeah, heroic 28 millimeters. So, let's talk a little bit. Um about the, the rules that you have in mind in the game mechanics, Alessio. Um, how far have you got with, the, with your thought process or the design process on that? Well, the, the game is, as I said, the game system was already in place, written. Uh, that system was written as a, as a mass combat war game, but actually, because we decided to start smaller, I went, scaled it down. But it's the same system, just scaled down to single model. So the game, uh, again, in the box you get 10 Terminators, 5 Crawlers, and 16 Rebels. 16 Resistance Fighters. Uh, and you will get also a character, a hero. Maybe we shouldn't reveal who is, he, who is yet. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, is about obviously the setting of the game is the is the war against the machines. So the, the the setting is Terminator Genesis. In the future, the fight between the machines that makes the best war game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have fight, and you will see in, in the in the rules there will be rules for uh, more stuff that you've seen or you will see in the in, in the movie. Um, both on both sides, you know, uh, yeah, both on the good guys and the bad guys side. Um, assuming that the Terminators are the bad guys. Um, so, um, you were saying about rules. Uh, it's skirmish in the sense that each model moves individually. They're not organized in units. Uh, it's designed to be played on a small area. I mean, the starter set, the, the box, has a mat in it, a play mat, which is three feet times two feet, once you open it. You know, all of all of the stuff I'm going to tell you, by the way, may change slightly because we're still, you know, defining... I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to be any other way. Are you, are you building in uh, the uh, rules or abilities for three-dimensional terrain to be uh, from the start, or... Okay, um, it, 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 it is a war the, game, I suppose, yeah, so... It's a war game, so the, the play mat doesn't have a hex grid or a square axis, mm -hmm. anything. So it's just literally, imagine that the play mat represents your table. Your table with texture, because it's got a nice... Do we actually have something to show? Yeah. So the play mat... Thank you. <laughs> play mat is... I don't know what you can see, but this is obviously prototypes and stuff, but, you know, it wouldn't have a white... It wouldn't have a white lip to start with, but, mm -hmm. you know, charred, wasteland... Future ruined, burnt out, nuclear holocaust type <laughs> terrain. So that's just a flat surface. Is your texturized table? Effective. Have you thought about the material of the play mat yet, or is it going to be um, like a vinyl thing, or or one of them neoprene? Uh, well, we're going to be selling a uh, a nice play mat, but in the box we just throw in a kind of a, a cheaper version. You know, but it's free. You just mm -hmm. get a sorry, well, free. He's included. <laughs> it's just an, it invites you to the same to, to play to the right size. However, the game is written so that you can play easily. I mean, it's a, your own a, a four by four table, so you can play on the mat, which is that is smaller. You can fit it on a kitchen table. You can play on a on a normal four by four table war game table. You can play on the on the table of your kitchen. We will include also a couple of uh, of uh, a few punch boards in there of terrain. Because mm -hmm. you have the flat board, and then you have things like that. So you'll have areas of terrain, obstacle terrain, you know, solid pieces of terrain. Uh, don't worry about that. We're getting, <laughs> we'll design that. But yes, so terrain, 2D flat terrain, which you lay out, so obviously, to create your the terrain. Uh, and of course, the book will also show you how instead to build terrain, build 3D terrain, because 3D terrain, 2D terrain, same rules. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So you can see it as a 
top down. But all the rules are written top down. So if you want to go 3D, it looks better. Obviously, it's a bit demanding. Uh, and more. <laughs> so probably one or two terrain frames. Mm -hmm. terrain, sorry, terrain uh, punch board. And then another punch board, which has the tokens and uh, measuring devices. So effectively, uh, in the box, you get models. You get a plastic models that clip together. The, the resistance clip together as well. They're actually two pieces as opposed to three pieces, so they're even easier to clip together. Uh, you get the uh, the mats, which you can or cannot use, depending whether you're a war gamer or not. I guess I think war gamers will skip the mat and just go straight to the to the board, to the to the tables. Uh, the terrain, 2D terrain. And you also get the templates and all the counters you need for, for the game. And dice, of course. We'll get to the dice in a while because they're kind of an important thing. And, of course, the rule book, which is going to be full color, softback, uh, about, I don't know, 64 to 100 pages. We're still, we're, we're still working on that, so <laughs> I don't know the final page count. And you get also 16 pages, leafletty, get started, quick rules, you know, the quick play rules, if you want which are just a summary of the main rules that allow you to use the contents of the box. Just if you were using just the contents of the box, just on the mat. Okay? So, um, it, we have this uh, this boxed game, okay? Yeah. So it's like, a, it's like a miniatures game in a box um, yeah. for that kind of mass production. But for those of us then that want to <clears throat> scale things up a bit, yeah. you know, um, 10 Terminator, 16 humans sounds great, but... We're we're collectors. We want more or less. You know. <laughs> what, what what are what are our options? Have you got immediate plans for expansion boxes and things around the same time, or well, does it depend upon the uh, on how things go with the initial release? Or well, the original uh, sorry the, the the starting range, if you want, includes uh, basically the start of that, but also the, you can buy separately Terminators in a box, Resistance in a box, and we want to give characters. Uh, that you can buy on uh, Heroes, that you can buy in Blisters, possibly in Resin. We're looking at Resin casting. It's very likely they're going to be Resin. Um, the, uh, they are the heroes. So it would be the, the John Connor, the Sarah Connor, uh, Kyrie's, T-1000s, and you know, all sorts of other things. Uh, so but basically we keep this as a infantry level. Things. You can have a lot more infantry and some heroes that will interact with the system, and we'll show you that. The rulebook, however has rules for, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer, the big spidery thing that drops in front of Reese and John Connor and raises up. Oh, fight. hell yes, I have, yep. <laughs> so that, the, the fly, the hunter killers, the rules for those are in the book. Uh, and also the humans have rules for, I don't know, uh, Apache helicopters, uh, Abraham tanks, uh, Humvees. Uh, they have the rules for all of that gear. Of course, we're not quite making it quite straight away. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, that was all I was waiting to hear was that there were rules for all the vehicles and stuff in that. So uh, if it be, if it if it grows and grows for you, Alessio, I would imagine then that the that the vehicles could be an option further down the road. Yes, and, and uh, obviously the plan, as you know, uh, we're not kickstarting this. We're not going for crowdfunding. Uh, it was too complicated. I imagine you can you can imagine the relationship with big companies, etc. So too complicated. We're not okay. Traditional finance properly invest. And because of that, of course, we have to go. We are not. We are not a huge company. We're not getting workshops, so we, we have to take it, you know, in steps, in baby steps, and grow it. Which you know is, I found very refreshing. I, I really like that. And actually, from comments from the public, the public seems to like that too. Is that kind of old-fashioned, if you want, slightly old-fashioned. We'll start. We'll build, you know, cool starter set, infantry base, but we rules to add stuff. Uh, you can have two D versions, I suppose, of, of the of the vehicles to start with, and I probably will include at least one in the you know the in the starter set, or maybe two. But the idea is, if the game goes goes well, uh, if it's sold well, and uh, we start to have a return of cash from our investment, because it was quite an investment, uh, then uh, we can start producing the bigger pieces. More, more characters, more Arnies. Who would want Arnold on, his, on a motorbike and stuff like that? But uh, as well as you know, tanks, helicopters, uh, spider things, and, you know, more stuff, bigger stuff. Um, and on the subject of more stuff and and bigger stuff, there's a couple of uh, 
there's a couple of things I'd like to ask you. The 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 T one thousand is a shapeshifter, Alessio. Have you have you kind of crafted that into the rules? Well, the uh, the T one thousand, which of course we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna we don't, must have it in metal. What other material would we want to cast the T one thousand in? Because well, there's a big advantage in if we miscast. We just get silver play doh. <laughs> we can we'll shapeshift them ourselves on the tabletop. Well, no, they, they have a lot of special rules, obviously, because it's the kind of unit that will have a lot of special rules. But again, remember, I'm trying to keep this extremely simple. So, you know, don't expect mountains of rules. It's all feels very streamlined. Uh, the system is is an activation system. Uh, the as I said, the rulers, the dice, everything's in there. So, you, you, from the status set, you have everything you need to play. Because actually, the the terminators are in a silver colored plastic, metallic silver colored plastic. Well, the resistance are in a green kind of, you know, camo, green, army green, so, so like army man green. So instantly you have two armies, different colors, terrain, mat, all the templates, all the counters you need, and the dice, and off you go. You can play the game. And then, of course, if you wish to build it up, paint the map, uh, do a terrain thing, the, the rubric will show you all of that as well. So in terms of um, the setting for the game... Um, is it played in the future? Can it be played in 1980s Los Angeles? Um, or, or can it be played anywhere in between? And a key question for you, it, or is time travel actually represented within the game itself? Yeah, it, uh, okay, the, the, the main focus is the war against the machine. It's a war game, therefore it's a big battle between you know hordes of uh, endoskeletons and troops armed with you know with plasma weapons, so it actually can hurt them, <laughs> as opposed to you know the, the modern uh, contemporary weapons which struggle. Um, but of course, we all seen, and the film will have a big thing set in uh, our present, the past from the point of view of the war. It's always a bit confusing to refer to the present or the past. Well. Let's call it our time, uh, 1990, 1984, 2000. Yeah, it's basically now. The now is present in the game in the sense that there are scenarios. There's a lot of scenarios in the in the game uh, in the in the rule book. Uh, some scenarios are battle scenarios, you know, kind of the pickup game scenarios where you roll for deployment, roll for objective, and uh, both sides. So it, it is more akin to a normal pick up and play war game, a competitive war game, if you want, you know. The kind of stuff I really like, frankly. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's my my way of enjoying this hobby, is the competitive side. So that's catered for. But also, but in fact, because there's a matrix there, you can have up to 36 scenarios, competitive scenarios. Imagine roll for deployment, six deployments, and roll for objective, six objectives. So you can go this, this deployment with that objective, and the, and the combination has this 36 possible combination of games. Uh, and then, of course, we're tinkering with allowing different objectives to different sides. Of the but that's still being playtested. I don't know if you want to go there. We'll see. Um, on the subject, just while well, I've got you on the likes of um, scenarios and stuff like that, um, have you written any kind of fixed linked scenarios that almost have like a campaign progression uh, yeah. into the book? Well, I was saying, these are called the battle scenarios, with the one I just described, competitive, pick-up, balance scenarios. And then there's a completely different section, which is the narrative scenarios. And the narrative scenarios are story-driven. And they may not be balanced. There may be, you know, a lot of, uh, a few guys attacked in a compound and being shot to pieces. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of, um, uh, the, the, you can recreate the scenes from the movie, so you walk through the movie, each scene, etc. Uh, whether to link them as a campaign or not, uh, I suspect the answer is no, I think, uh, or maybe not much. As in, not in a complex set of campaign. Uh, as a, this it is what is what this is not is not a role play game. You don't have characters that do experience and improve and stuff like this. This is uh, more uh, uh, more of a you know just you, you you pick your force in the in the in the competitive scenarios or you just uh, follow the the, the recommended uh, participants for the for the narrative scenarios, which of course you can then tweak. But uh, those are the ones that the, the narrative scenarios can be set in the future, like the like competitive scenarios, or in our present, where maybe instead of having you know lots and lots of terminators against lots and lots of uh, of uh, rebels with plasma rifles, what you have is one terminator that's gone back in time and is fighting ten cops with 
you know, with some machine guns, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> which have a really, really bad time <laughs> taking this thing out. <laughs> you know, as he rips them to pieces with his hands and shoots them, and uh, they cannot hurt it. Uh, very difficult. So basically, in there, it would be vital, obviously, your Sarah Connors, your... Uh, uh, I don't know, if you've seen the trailer of Genesis again, you get Sarah, you get Kyle Reese, but more importantly, you get another Arnie on your side. <laughs> so, you know, it's Arnie versus Arnie, and yes, you get a good Arnie. We, I, I cannot say too much about it, but yes, so you get some heavy stuff, some heavy gear that can take them out. Of course, it's relatively hard to take out, to take down one Terminator, uh, and of course, the moment it's a T-1000, it becomes a lot harder. <laughs> so, so good yeah, because I, 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 I was just totting up the... Uh, 10 Terminators versus, I think it was 16 humans in the box, surely those humans are going to get their asses handed to them. It, well, it depends on what they are equipped with, because uh, uh, basically the, the, the frame allows you to have a mix of weapons, ranging from a, an assault rifle, just a normal assault rifle, uh, not a plasma assault rifle, to plasma weaponry. You can have shotguns, uh, you can have uh, a lot of plasma rifles. Plasma rifles are quite punchy. Uh, but still, it's still very hard, even with a plasma rifle, to take out a Terminator. And, uh, of course, you also have rocket launchers and grenade launchers in there. So, you know, it starts to go a bit better for you. Uh, and, yes, actually, in any way, you're right. 16 against 10 is still going to be very, very, very hard for the for the humans. However, of course, what they say is they get a hero in there. And the hero, because of the way the game system works, has a big impact. It helps. So 16 humans and a hero towards the Terminators is a bit more of, a, of an even fight. Uh, heroes are not particularly fightier, but their command and control is very important with the activation system. Uh, should I go briefly through that? Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I'd be interested in knowing is um, do you have, um, through your playtest so far, a, a, like a feel for how the game plays out? Like, is it very shooty, um, or does it get up close and personal uh, during the game? You know, what, what, what kind of vibe do we get? Uh, the answer is yes, <laughs> in the sense that, uh, of course, shooting is a big part of it uh, because uh, we are, we are, you know, the Terminators are big guns. Again, you see the trailer, they have these massive things, so they're quite a nasty. So at the range, uh, there is a, there's a lot of death that gets dealt through the ranged attacks. However, uh, cross combat has an importance. It, it is not, again, in the game mechanics, there's not such thing as cross combat in the sense of I'm getting stuck in combat with this guy, I charge this guy. Uh, cross combat means getting very close to it, and instead of using my rifle, I'm using my special cross combat attack, which again, for the humans, often means humans don't want to do that. Humans want to st- stand off and shoot the Terminators, because getting close, not a very good idea. <laughs> well, the Terminators yeah. have nice ranged attack of a certain power, and then when they close in, they actually, the, 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 the hands are actually hurt you more than uh, <laughs> their guns. So they, they, they can literally take your head off, uh, rip your head off. Uh, the humans, however, uh, because a lot of the, the, the weapons that cannot, or even the plasma rifles, when you fight a Terminator, uh, to actually destroy it, take it out with ranged attacks, is difficult. It's really, you need luck, really luck on your side. What you want is to pepper them with shots, make them fall over, make them reset for a second. You know, if you've seen some of the, the previous movies and TV series, that, you know, is a lot about filling them up with lead and plasma until they kind of fall over. And when they're on the ground, that's when you jump on them and fire in their face, literally, or, or maybe disable them, you plant explosives on them, etc. So, the and have you mentioned, are you recapturing that kind of yeah, yeah, feel yeah, yeah. and vibe in the yeah. game? Yes, yes, because if you say, I'll give you an example, fire a plasma rifle, hit a Terminator, you have one chance in, he- in eight to destroy it. However, if you don't destroy it, whenever you're hit by something, you then have to test on your uh, your resolve. Uh, and if you fail the resolve test, you get more pinning. You get until basically you become almost helpless, kind of on the ground, kind of going, zzz, or or a human would be on the ground, kind of going, <laughs> enough, you know, <laughs> curling the ball. And then that makes you very vulnerable to close combat. Well, to to any sh- very very close range thing. So the idea is for the, for the what the humans are trying to do is to shoot the terminators with the big with the rocket launchers, etc., to make to blow them up, but also trying to just pepper them with fire, with normal fire, so that actually disable them for a turn, maybe two, and then you have to rush in and finish them off while on the ground, because because that's the way, the best way to take them out. However, of course, if there are other Terminators around, they will if they can close. So it, you know, it's, 
edgy, difficult, <laughs> interesting. Uh, but yeah, we found it. You know, we did. The rules do capture that absolutely. They're written for that specifically to make this thing, you know, hard, hard. And also, there's a good chance I mean, you've seen the, the the crawler. Even when you do take them out, blow them up, there is a, a chance that actually you haven't blown them up. You've blown up their legs, <laughs> and they still come at you. <laughs> a lot slower, admittedly, and don't have a gun anymore. They move a lot slower, but they're still coming at you <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Uh, Somebody's asking on the on the chat here um, about the the dice. You'd mentioned a one and eight chance. Are you going to use d8s for this uh, for this game? The, the game has uh, the full range of uh, polyhedral dice because I have a love for the polyhedral dice. And oh, so it's a, so it's poly dice. It's a full the full yeah, the full range d4, d6, d8, d10, d12, d20, and fate dice, which are the unique engine of the game, effectively. So, you have all the different... Because basically, the game, one of the good points about this game, I believe, uh, if I say so myself, is that there are no modifications during the game. There is no plus one, minus one, plus three, double, blah. No, it's always a number. And depending on how good you are, you roll a bigger dice. So, say for example, I need a four to hit at a certain range, if I'm a civilian, I will roll a d4. I need to roll a 4. If I'm a cop, I will roll a d6. If I'm a trained soldier, a you know, resistance guy, I will roll a d8. Maybe, maybe if I'm aiming, I will roll a d8. Terminators, d8, and so on and so on. And the same goes for morale. You know, a human, normal trait. Civilian, d4. Maybe you have to roll 5s or 6s. <laughs> civilian has got a d4. It's not going to stay in fight. Uh, so cops at d6, uh, Russell, rebel at d8, an officer d10, Sarah Connor at d12, and then machines, all machines at d20. Because obviously <laughs> they don't, they're difficult to to deter from their mission, kind of thing. Uh, so d8 and simple, simple stats. I mean, uh, every model has three stats. So you know, very simple mechanics, uh, and this. Is, uh, and that is the fate dice. That is a prototype of a fate dice. Yeah, it may end up being slightly different, but you get so. Away. How does the fate dice work, Alessio? What's the what's this the, the, the key to it? This is the activation engine. When you uh, it's your turn to activate, you roll this. Instead of being I go once, you go once, I go once, you go once, I roll this, and this tells me what do I get to? How many of my guys do I get to activate? I get one, two, or fate. Fate, unfortunately, means nothing. You don't get to activate. You lost the pace. The enemy gets to activate again. So you give it back to the other guy, and he rolls. So you have the moment of, I could get a few guys, a guy, or nothing. Uh, and that's how it bounces. So there's the, the big tension in the important moment where you really want to go, and you go, fate, no. So that feels... Uh, you don't have a complete control. You can have a two goes in a row, three goes in a row. I mean, you can have an infinite number of rows in a row if the other guy keeps play, uh, keep fading. And that's where the heroes, the commanders, come in. Because you know, there's a big thing in Terminator about there is no fate. You know, it's all about the time thing. You know, can you change the future? You know, or is it just the future is set and you are you're just walking towards it and you can whatever you do, you're gonna get there. You know, is Judgment Day? Can you stop Judgment Day or can you just postpone it? So. And there's a big thing about there is no fate except the fate we make for ourselves. It's a big quote from it. I love it. For, frankly, I think it applies to our life. And characters have rules that have all to do with that. So character, I managed to, to play the, the quote game. So every rule to do with that is actually a quote from the movie. Uh, so, for example, there's a, an, an action that characters can do, which is called uh, there is no fate. But we'll be uh, no fate is the no fate rule. So basically, when you roll fate, a hero, John Reed, like Kyle Reed, can go, no, screw that, no fate, come with me, and he activates anyway. So once per turn, he goes, no, I'll override that, it's me, come with me, guys. So depending on how good a commander is, he could just go, no, 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 I'm using my activation, yes, we are activating, regardless of the fate that I just roll, I fight fate, I refuse to surrender, you, you, and you, come with me. That would be your John Connor. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um. And this, it, well, sorry, it, that's one of the things they can do. They yeah, can do so the, Come with me. In, if you in want the to turn, Alessio, yes. right? Um, 
it, does that mean uh, it, it, uh, I'm going to refer to bolt action here because in bolt action we have the whole hand in the bag sequence where we're able to uh, yeah. pull um, pull activations, okay? And what happens yeah, is sometimes I get a bunch of activations and I might get a whole pile of them, but then what that's really doing is just giving a whole lot of activations to my opponent towards the end of the turn. Is, is this is this uh, similar in that if I roll fate a load of times and I don't get to move my guys, I will still get to move them at the end of the turn, or how does that work? Well, that, that is that is true in the sense that obviously every model has to be activated during the turn. So uh, yes, if I keep rolling fate, I kind of postponing my time. My time will come later, but of course, that could be a bonus in some cases where you want the opponent to spend his actions and then you have a big thing. But if you're desperate, it could be a something complete really disaster. Hurts, <laughs> it could be a disaster. That's why your commanders, when to use your commanders, when to repeat, <coughs> becomes important. Uh, they have other abilities. Uh, they, basically, they, 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 they are the ones that change the pace of the game. They have other rules that do that kind of stuff. So, you know, they have the, can we meet if you want to live? They have uh, on your feet soldiers, the kind of roles. So, uh, anyway. Um, do you have the, I want your clothes, boots, and motorcycle? I think that we could probably put in a, in a, um, in a scenario, certainly. But the one that I'm really, I'm really pleased uh, is, you know, the when you when you terminate somebody who's in the ground, helpless, etc. So basically, when you you basically is an execution special rule. You know, like if you're on the ground, helpless, and just about to shoot you in the face. What's that called? Well, you tell me what's that called. Yes, think think about think about the film. Oh, think of the film. He shot in the face. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Alessio, because all I can think of as commando is a stick around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting all my all my darny tropes all mixed yeah. up here. <laughs> the the execution shot in the face rule is called Hasta la vista, baby. Oh, of course. <laughs> 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 so what about time travel, Alessio? Is there yeah. is there any mechanics for time travel? In the actual game sequence itself, it really is bizarrely. Yeah, uh, it's not in the game sequence. It's uh, in uh, <clears throat> basically players have uh, tokens. One to start with, they can acquire more if they want. Spend points on that. Those tokens are called TDD tokens, time displacement device tokens, which is what they call a time machine in the Terminator universe. So the idea is. I fire this rocket launcher in the face of the Terminator and he's gonna win me the game and I hit it. Yay! And I then proceed to fail to, you know, even if I roll a D20 because it's a big thing, I roll one and I go, oh no. And you go, wait a second. I could send somebody in the past, an agent in there, and he will actually train this guy to fire the rocket launcher. To <laughs> I love it! You make up some fairly plausible story. We don't have to, of course. It's just for fun. But basically, at any point, you can go... Oh, no. I want to it's a up. must. You have to make up the stories, Alessio. Well, <laughs> I strongly recommend it. But basically, what you're saying is, I want to reroll that dice. I want to change what's happened. I want to change... I don't like this. Let's change it. <laughs> Let's go. So what happens is, you, you use your TDD marker and go, yeah, I'm sending a guy, my TDD guy agent is going back in the past to change the past, to you know change the future. And, and if the opponent says... Fine, I let you go. Then fine. Then you get your reroll and you reroll the dice. Of course, the opponent may have TDDs as well and goes, you know, I would like that Terminator actually. So I'm sending my agent to kill your agent in the past, <laughs> so that actually you don't get the reroll. And then, so the two agents at this stage it just dies. You can buy better agents, uh, bigger dice, and they just have a roll off, and it, whichever wins decides whether you do get reroll or not. Uh, which is kind of a cute little mechanic. Uh, of course, if you send back a cheap T800 and Terminator, you roll, I don't know, a D8. If you send back a T1000, it's very expensive. One of your TDD agents, that will be more expensive. But obviously, it's a bigger chance of the T1000 actually killing the the agent that is going in the past and stopping you there. So that mechanic, changing the future, changing the reroll, is there. Yes, of course it is. Uh, and, of course, scenarios are also based on that. But in the core mechanics, yes, there is the time displacement device. Uh, let me show you the <laughs> probably the counter. TDDs, activation markers for your activations. Uh, and more importantly, let me show you those three templates. That template is 11 inches long and says long range. Sorry, short range. And on the other side, it says run. 
<laughs> One side is the running distance, on the other side is the short range distance. It's 11 inches because clearly if you have a model here, you stick the template next to it and put the model back here and you moved the full distance and guess how much you moved? 12 inches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, because the base is 25 mil round, so there you go, <laughs> 12 inches. Uh, that's a point blank distance, point blank distance, 4 plus to hit, which obviously on the other side says walk. That's a walk distance. And this final, this little one here is the 3 plus cross combat distance, which on the other side says crawl. Ah. So it's crawl, walk, run. So there's no direct need for tape measures then. Um, yeah, no, you can use the components that's in the box. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, everything is in there. Yeah, yeah. You can play your game there because basically anything that is longer than short range, you've seen the short range template, anything longer than that is long range. Yeah. Any plans to create any of these uh, tokens and templates in plastic, Alessio, uh, as and when things move on for the game? Sure, if things go well, we have planned uh, a gift going to the range. We said blister of characters, boxes of plastics, the plastics of the thing, dice that you can buy separately, uh, probably we'll do templates, uh, the, a nice deluxe play mat, uh, and of course later on maybe a box of metal with, you know, maybe set in the past with scenarios to do with, you know, with Los Angeles cops against uh, one Terminator to 1000 and some more heroes and a different pose of Sarah Connors and a different pose of Arnie. Because of course, you know, Emilia Clark, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nice mold, we think. So, let's talk a little bit about uh, release date and what people can do to get in on the action now, because I've seen at least one uh, comment coming through saying, can I pre-order? So for anybody that's interested, Alessio, what, um, what, what can they do um, to keep up with this, and when do you expect the game to be out? Right. Well, the, the game will be out officially, as in really out in stores uh, when the movie launches, which is in early July, beginning of July. Uh, but you can be, uh, if you're a retailer or a distributor, uh, I would say speak to Warlord Games because they have the exclusive distribution of this, so they will be selling. We're going to make it, as in build it, pay, deliver it in Warlord. They're going to sell it. So... Uh, if you're a retailer or a, or a distributor, talk to them. If you're a customer, uh, well, keep an eye on the mail order pages of Warlord because that will be the, the the first place where you can buy it. The, the, the earliest you can buy it will be published on their pages. We're still defining exactly when the, that is going to be, maybe a few months before the film. But we'll find that you know, it's, we're, we're trying to get everything in place, but it's difficult to be precise about this. But probably before then, I don't know. It, it all depends on production schedules, etc. But... Definitely in July it will be out officially and out, and the, the initial range will be there. We'll be keeping a good eye on uh, how it's going, how it's doing, and obviously we'll be planning to build more stuff and bring stuff up and more models, bigger models. Uh, place. We'll see. Depends how it goes, of course. Well, Alessio, thank you very much for joining me tonight. It's, um, it sounds fantastic. It sounds like a very, very exciting development process you're going through. If oh, you can sorry, keep sorry, it sorry, updated... Well, Sorry, Warren, the, the, what I was thinking, when you said also how the people can get informed of this, of course, they could go on our website, the Riverhorse website. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you can go to uh, riverhorse.eu, and you'll see a yellow Terminator link there, or you can go to riverhorse.eu forward slash Terminator, where there's a little mailing list that you can uh, plug your details in to be announced, or to get an announcement email as soon um, as each announcement is, is ready to come out from the guys. Uh, Alessio, very exciting stuff. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Uh, you obviously have an open invitation to join us any time on the weekend or to bring that game along till we get a game of it and uh, see what it's like. But uh, I definitely can't wait, and um, definitely I'll be putting myself down for multiple boxes of it because I, <laughs> I want to try and scale this thing up. So, yeah. Alessio, thank you as, as always. It's been a pleasure, and we hope to see you soon. You will. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Look, thank you very much for watching, and thank you for hanging out with us again on this Wednesday night. Um, next Wednesday night, we expect to have Rick Priestley on for that chat about the Beyond the Gates of Antares. We also have a spectacular prize that we're giving away that night as well. So stay tuned for The Hangout next Wednesday night. So until then, have a great gaming week, and we'll be back again soon. Take care. We'll be back.